Ethan, stay back! Ethan, stay back! Stay back! Ethan, stay back! Ethan! Drop the knife! Drop the f***ing knife! Drop the knife! Criminals often clash with police officers, disobeying rules and sometimes resorting to violence. But what happens when things escalate and they attack the officers? Here are seven unbelievable moments when dumb suspects try to attack cops. Starting with 25-year-old Miguel Salas, who on August 1st, 2017, was confronted by Las Vegas police officer Nelson and his partner after a person called 911, reporting that he had tracked his stolen cell phone to the truck Miguel was in. However, what began as a routine investigation quickly escalated into a nightmare. Do you have anything illegal on you? Guns, drugs, anything like that? No? Okay. Why, why do you want me to step out? Though? What's that? Why? Because we're trying to figure out what's going on while you're sleeping here and stuff like that and we're getting calls on you. So, okay, well I'm just asking you to step out, man. I don't understand though, like, really, like, why? Like, why? Because I'm going to do my business over here. I don't like doing it over here. You've been, you've been uh, fiddling around everywhere. You don't know where your ID's at and stuff like that, so I want to do it. Don't be fiddling around. I know where it's at. I know where it's at. Well, I'm telling you, don't be looking around. I'm just looking. Okay, that's we don't want you to dig around. That's why we're pulling you out of the car. Dude, just get out of the car. Get out of the car. Come on. Like, come on, dude. Like, really? I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay. Why am I we never playing? said anything. You were doing anything wrong. We wanted to do your stuff out here. We wanted... Why? why? Like, why? Why are you doing this? 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 Why are you because we don't, we don't know what's in here, we're not to move here. During the encounter, Miguel protests his innocence and refuses to get out of the vehicle up to the moment when Officer Nelson tries to open the car door. Little did the officer know of what was about to unfold in the next few minutes. The situation did not de-escalate, with Miguel still refusing to cooperate. And just when Officer Nelson eventually decided to call for backup, everything finally went south. Step out of the car, man. Dude, why are you guys trying to get me out of my car, dude? We're because gonna it's down. safer for us if we want you out of the car. Hey, stay over there, man. Dude, why? Dude, relax. I'm not doing nothing Yes, bad. you are. You're not listening to our command. Do you want to get tased? Do you want to get tased? No, I don't want to get the... Okay, then come out. Hey, what's that? Let me get the front of the car, man. Okay. Well, the door's off broken, look. Okay. Just open the door. Well, come out. In a sudden move, Miguel grabs a Glock 23 sitting next to his right leg and begins firing first at the second officer, and then at Officer Nelson. Unfortunately, the bullet hit Officer Nelson in the chest area, passing between the panels of his bulletproof vest while Nelson's partner was struck on his work belt. Luckily for him, he wasn't wounded, but didn't realize it until hours later. I don't know, I've been hit. However, Miguel didn't survive, as he died after being hit in the head. Nelson, who has been with the department since 2009, was put on paid administrative leave while the case was reviewed. But if you thought that was scary, wait until you see our next case about a suspect who was armed with a rifle instead. 26-year-old Dion Marcus Rivas Maestas, on May 13th, 2017, was pulled over by a Douglas County deputy, Brad Pro, near County Line Road and Santa Fe Drive. But what was meant to be a routine traffic stop quickly soon got out of hand.
As the officer approached the vehicle, the occupant of the vehicle got out with an unloaded rifle and charged at the deputy. Fearing for his life, the deputy fell to the ground and fired two shots, hitting the 26-year-old suspect in the arm once. In that instant, it is evident that the deputy felt his life was in danger and responded the way he was trained to. The deputy later got to his feet and held Marcus at gunpoint until other officers arrived and made the arrest. Keep 15 shots fired! Keep 15 shots fired! Keep 15 shots fired! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Don't move! It's incredible to see what adrenaline does to the body, and in this case, to the officer's voice. I'm okay. Start medical for a subject with a bleeding arm. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Luckily, Brad was unharmed during the incident, while Marcus, who was bleeding, was hospitalized. After his release, he was booked into Douglas County Jail and charged with first-degree assault. And as many of you would expect, these types of situations don't end here. Drop the knife! Drop the f***ing knife! Drop the knife! This is 46-year-old Javier Pablo Alaman, who on March 29, 2016, was walking alone along Interstate 75 outside Cincinnati when he was confronted by Glendale officer Josh Hilling. Little did the officer know the kind of person he had encountered. Oh, uh, you can't walk on the highway. I'm sort of a so You got any ID on you? No, man. You don't have any ID? Where Somebody. you coming from? Uh, Dayton. You're coming from Dayton? Yeah. Where you been staying at? Staying? Yeah. No, I just came and looking for a taxi company or something like that. How'd you get down this far? Uh, the Chinese bus. Okay. Somebody was supposed to bring me out there, but she didn't be. Okay, what's your name? Ch uh, Carlos. The Spanish for Charles. Uh, what's your last name? Umbrella. How you spell it? A M B. L, R, R. Two L's? R. R. E. L. A. You have a social security number? No. You have anything on you that tells you what who you are? No, Who you got in your backpack? Dead close. Alright, let's just set it down here. At first, a layman, who is later discovered to be wanted for killing his 51-year-old roommate, Victor Adolfo Serrano in Baltimore, gave a fake name when the officer questioned him about what he was doing walking alone on the highway. It is evident that Javier didn't want the officer to find out who he really was, and as such, thought it was better to lie so that the officer would leave him. However, that was not going to be the case, as Officer Josh asked that they head to his cruiser for a pat-down, and it didn't take long for Javier to show who he truly was. 7 King 11, I'll be southbound 75. I'm at the 14 over 9. I'll be out with one subject that was walking. Keep your hands out of your pockets for me. Sure, sure. Here, let's walk up to my cruiser real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you place your uh, hands on the back of my cruiser. I'm going to pat you down for officer safety. Oh. I'm going to pat you down for officer safety. Just when the cop is about to search Javier, he suddenly pulls out a large knife and charges at the officer, asking the shocked cop to shoot him. In self-defense, Officer Josh pulled the trigger and fired one shot, striking Javier in the abdomen. However, the already injured man refused to stay down as he repeatedly yelled for the officer to kill him, alternating between, kill me, and I'm going to kill you. Shots fired! Shots fired! Sir, man, squad, I shot one. He has a knife. Sir, get down! Sir, get down! Sir, get down! Get down! Get down! Get down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! 
Even when other officers arrived, Javier refused to listen to commands as Officer Josh continued to scream at him to stay down, maintaining his distance as Javier staggered towards him with the knife, falling to the ground several times. One shot! Subject shot only! Subject shot only in the abdomen! Still has a knife, not following any orders! Get me! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Stop! Just stop! Just stop! No! Get on the ground! Just get down! Sir, please just get down! Sir! Sir, please! Drop the knife! No, sir! Let us help you! Drop the knife! Let us help you! Sir, drop the knife! Please drop the knife! Please drop the knife! Sir, please drop the knife! After over eight officers arrived on the scene, Javier was finally stopped with a stun gun and arrested eventually ending the standoff. As you would expect, Officer Josh was not charged for shooting Javier. However, the 46-year-old fugitive was charged with attempted murder. Unfortunately, not all of these cases end without fatalities, and Ethan is one of them. Get back here! Stop! Ethan! This is 37-year-old Ethan Freeman, who in October 2020 had first crossed paths with Thornton Police Department officer Matthew Yao in the lobby of a local school after Ethan said he required medical help for what he thought was a heart attack. Ethan, what's going on? What's going on? I'm having a heart attack. You're having a heart attack? What's going on, dude? I'm having a heart attack. Okay, what? Can you tell me what you're feeling? Palpitations in them. All right. I'm feeling like I've got a lot of, a lot of heart pain. Okay. Just me. All right, just stay still for me, okay? Yep. He has a history of it, and his family has no allergies. Okay. Yep. Um, All right, listen. He may have some amphetamine. Yep. He's hep C positive. Okay. okay. All right, Ethan, as you know, I wear a body camera, okay? Listen, I'm asking, is there any needles on you right now I need to know about? What is it? Okay. No needles this time? Okay. Nothing. All right. When's the last time that you used? Uh, probably, I used, I used like four months ago. Okay. Can you tell me about, how, when did you wake up today? Uh, I haven't been able to sleep for days. <clears throat> okay. When's the last time you slept? Uh, uh, it's been a while. Okay. Yeah. You think you can keep your hand in your pocket for me? Yeah. I'm just going to pat you down, okay? Yep. Hey, what's going on? I have chest pain really bad in my, in my, ah, it's all big and scary. And I need to go to the hospital in the station right now. Stay relaxed, stay okay. relaxed, okay? You're not going anywhere until I get your pockets checked out, okay? All right. All right. Oh. You, you under the influence of anything? Maybe, I'm not sure. Okay. What, what do you think you might be under? Oh, I don't know, I just need mental help and I need medical assistance. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll get you checked out. I, can I please get to the hospital? Yep. Yep. Just roll on your side. I'd like to go with the ambulance. Yep, I know, man. I know. Oh. Oh. I might have to strap in so you don't fall off. You want to bring the stretcher down or? Yeah. Strap him in. Not long after, Ethan was put on a stretcher and taken to the hospital where he did something quite surprising. Get back here. Stop. Ethan. Ethan, stop. 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 Oh, for me. Because I'm having a heart attack. Dude. You're not having a heart attack, okay? Oh, I am. You're okay. You just ran like a mule. I didn't run. I ran before. Dude, I know you're freaking out, okay? I'm not mad at you for, for I'm saying that's a good sign, okay? Yeah. You're breathing. Look at your heart's working, right? Yeah, but... Okay, so you remember coronavirus you know, going on, right? Yeah. They have rules in the hospital. Keep everybody yeah. safe. All right. Before you can go inside, they have to talk to you. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. 
Stay calm. I'm sorry. We're here. Okay, I'm just You're going to be okay. Palpitations. I know you're going to be okay. All right. Can I be brought in the ER door? Right there where the ER That's where we're going. Okay. Yeah. Can you walk? Yes, sir. You're going to run? No. All right. Be calm, okay? Yes. You're all right. Okay. Okay? Yeah. When they arrived at the hospital, Ethan, for unknown reasons, started running but was calmed down by Officer Yao before going to the doctor. Later, Ethan was released and allowed to return to his apartment. However, hours after returning from the hospital, his upstairs neighbor and landlord dialed 911 and reported a commotion coming from his apartment. Police department! Ethan, it's Officer Yao. You okay? Ethan, what's going on? Ethan. Hey, 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 what's... There's feces everywhere. I need you to call the cops and paramedics to get me a rescue team right now. Ethan, it's Officer Yao from Thornton Police. Yes, come in here and get me to the hospital. What, what, what's going on? I have a like a chicken, and I have a well, full of Do you have any weapons on you right now? Yeah, let's go. Hey, what do you got? My in my hand. You got a problem with that? Hey, it's Officer Yao, dude. What's going on? You... Hey, you know me. Hey, you know me, dude. What's going on? Hey, Ethan. Ethan. Ethan, drop that. Ethan? 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 Thornton 3, he is naked and threatening my life. Officer Yao approached the apartment and once again attempted to communicate with Ethan to calm him down. However, his efforts were futile as Ethan continued to yell obscenities at the officer and repeatedly threatened to kill him, causing him to retreat to a safe distance. You'll agree with me that the duo seemed to have built a good relationship earlier on, which makes the events that unraveled next all the more baffling. Ethan! I am the police. You know me. Let's talk six. Copy that. I just saw you this morning, dude. Well, why am I going to bring the paramedics then? Hey, man. Hey. You don't hear me talking to you like that. From the road off 175 Mountain Laurel or Ethan. I am the cops. Don't be like this, dude. Hey, I want to help you. I, I want to help you. Ethan, come on. I did call the paramedics. Yeah. But they're not going to come over here if you're being like this. Ethan. Ethan. Ethan, stay in there. Ethan! Stay in there! Ethan! Ethan, stay back! Ethan, stay back! Stay back! Ethan, stay back! Ethan, stay back! From a safe distance, Officer Yao again tried to settle the situation, but Ethan did not stop threatening to kill Yao before jumping out of a window and advancing on the officer. And when Ethan gets to 10 feet away and still fails to stop, Officer Yao opens fire, shooting the man twice. Unfortunately, Ethan collapsed to the ground and died from his gunshot wounds. However, these situations keep getting worse and worse, as is the case of Giovanna. This is 24-year-old Giovanna Kelsey McCreary, who on July 8, 2020, was reported to the police that her behavior was out of control and she had fired a gun. When officers arrived, they found Giovanna standing near a parking lot by a hotel along Black Canyon Highway in Phoenix, Arizona, and wasted no time confronting her. I told you. That's there, bro. All right. Stay here. Stay here. Thank you. I might need you. Stay here, because I may need you. Yeah, bro. Young lady, do you have a firearm on you? Did you get into an altercation? Were you fired off a gun? I did not fire off a gun. He fired off his girl. 
Stay over there. Oh, my bad. I'm going to crack Yeah, please, stay the f away from me. Okay. I didn't do shit. You got your f***ing people back. Look, I have everything on my phone. Let me see your phone. Let me see. Show me. Show me who shot a gun. Show me. I didn't have the video, but I have all well, the proof you, on Show me your proof that it, somebody shot it's the gun. Proof. This you have ID, first of all? I have a temporary. Yeah. He's been calling me, threatening me. I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, oh, oh. And then he calls me, and he's like, you start showing me around all these people. This is her. This is Who her. shot this the gun? Her. That bitch in there, the fucking Mexican. With the fucking back. Okay. Where did she shoot a gun at? Towards me. During their conversation, Giovanna denies both possessing or firing a gun. It is evident that Giovanna thought her words would make the police stop questioning her and let her go. However, that would not be the case. Uh, I mean, all I could tell you okay, is Okay, well, we're going to look at the video people. out here and see who shot what. All right. You had no gun? I do not. You got bullets? Yeah. What are the bullets for? That's big. I don't 357 know. mag? She's got a scale. She's got some weed. I don't know what's in here. I was looking for a gun, but... After searching Giovanna's bag, the officers found ammunition and illegal drugs inside, which contradicted her lies. They also found out that she had an outstanding misdemeanor arrest warrant, and this led to their decision to arrest her on the spot. However, the young woman decided to do the unthinkable. What are these? Yep, that's all her stuff. Don't be stupid. Yeah. Just as Giovanna was to be put in handcuffs, she struggled with the officer and, at that moment, reached for a handgun in her waist area, then shot at the officers before taking to her heels. However, she did not make it far before the officers drew their weapons and shot at her, bringing her to the ground. Giovanna was subsequently taken to the hospital in critical condition, but survived her injuries. Luckily, no other person was injured during the encounter. And in most of these cases, the motive and reason behind the actions of the perpetrators is obvious, but that was not the case at all with Edward. Why are you Why are you? On June 3rd, 2022, an unidentified officer was conducting a traffic stop in Naperville when an uninvolved car pulled up next to him and the unexpected happened. Alright, you can take a picture and send it to me. Why are you doing? Why are you? 28-year-old Edward Saman, who was the driver, suddenly exited the vehicle and, without any explanation, charged the officer with a hatchet. Instinctively, the police officer pulled his gun and shot at him several times to protect himself. You good? You good? Take a breath. Take a breath. He pulled up beside me. He came out with a hatchet, man. This car? Yeah. Right here. Okay. Holy shit. You want to get somebody up there? Oh my god. Where were you at? Right here? In between? Right here. I turned around. He pulled up. I thought it was... Dude, he just pulled up for no reason. I remember. I know. Oh, my God. It was hard to tell what Edward's intention was when he tried getting up again, even after he was hit. Luckily, and as a very interesting note, Edward forgot to put the car in park once he pulled over, which gave the officer just enough time to realize what was going on, and neither he nor the other driver were harmed. I guess this explains why some officers are so on the edge sometimes, but if you thought people couldn't be any dumber, that's because you don't know Robert. This is 38-year-old Robert Anderson, who on August 25, 2021, was found holding a knife and walking in the traffic lanes on Parkway Drive and Sherwood Lane, Crescent City, after police responded to a 911 call reporting a disabled vehicle blocking the road. This, of course, got the attention of the officers and they decided to confront him. X-ray DV happened last night. Pretty deep on our face. He's got a pretty good sized kitchen knife in his hand. We got to put it back. He put it in his pocket. We refused to drop it. And he admitted to the DV too. But she's pretty beat up. But she's the only other person. She's just standing there next to her car right now. When a deputy arrived, an officer among those who had arrived earlier explained how they had met him in visible emotional distress and that he had admitted to having an altercation with his wife the previous night. However, Robert was refusing to cooperate with the officers. <laughs> This 
not come near me because I ain't coming near y'all though. We just what we what we have is that we want to get away from that knife. You want to step over here and talk to us? That'd be fine. We want to be away from that knife. I'm, this is what I'm saying right here. We all should have rights to just be able to stand where we want to stand. We should be able to do what we want to do. Like this is our planet. Like this is our planet. Y'all coming around like this is y'all and y'all taking it from us. I understand. We like, just want to get you away from the knife. Yeah, Can so you that's just step all in? y'all worried about? I'm worried about everything. Like I just lost my whole. I don't, look what I just did. This is, I, this is this matrix that we're living in. We've okay. been lied to. We all been lied to. Anderson eventually drops the knife, but refuses to move away from it. This only created an atmosphere of wariness because nobody knew what exactly was going through his mind, especially with the nonsense he was speaking. Tell me, baby, just tell me. Sir, can I just have you take a couple steps that way? Well, step over here, boy, man. I'm not gonna come here. Can I stay right here? No. Huh. We still talk because y'all worried about the night. Like y'all yeah. got guns, tasers, every sh that's what I'm saying, baby. That's what I'm saying. The control. That's what I was doing. I came clean. Right? You don't have to forgive me, but I'm still coming clean. Like, they ain't coming clean. Like, y'all in y'all uniform, like, I've been in uniforms too, and when the truth is the truth is the truth, man. Like, y'all don't even know who running y'all, or do y'all know? Do y'all know who running y'all? They don't even care about that, that's what I'm saying. And they all they caring about is the knife. And I ain't even got the knife. I'm just a man right here. We're right? just asking That's you how if you can step at. away from the knife for a second. And if I step away from the knife, what that mean? Are you recording, baby? At points when speaking to the officers, Robert seemed to address a woman at the scene standing down the road before taking a step back in the direction of the knife again, at which point the officers urged him to step away. However, Robert continued to be uncooperative and later did something absolutely horrifying. If I step away from the knife, what that mean? Are you recording, baby? After Robert heard his wife say he was going to jail, he swiftly grabbed the knife and lunged at one of the officers. In that instant, the officer dodged the assault, and as Robert headed toward the woman, other officers opened fire from behind, causing him to collapse on the street. Despite sustaining at least seven gunshot wounds, Robert had a faint pulse when paramedics arrived. He passed away shortly after. It's crazy to see how the officer was inches away from being sliced by the knife, and how far some people would go in these situations. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.